When I think about where we are today in, in this education reform effort, you know, we're at a, at a place I never would have predicted we could be at, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, and 20 years ago. When I got into this in the US, the prevailing notion fueled by all the research was that kids, race, and socioeconomic background on average determine their educational prospects. We did not have evidence that schools could overcome the effects um, of socioeconomic background. And if we had gone and looked hard, I think it would have been hard to find even a handful of schools that were showing that actually it is possible. Um, I'm not sure we could have found one, but let's just say we even could have found one or two. People would have chalked those up to charismatic school leaders and would have presumed that if they left, the whole thing would fall apart. Now, fast forward to today, we have indisputable evidence in hundreds of classrooms, but also in hundreds of whole schools that it is completely possible to provide kids facing all the extra challenges of poverty with an education that is transformational, meaning not just have a few kids beat the odds, which through our country's history we know it's always possible, but to put whole buildings full of kids um, who, based on their socioeconomic background, would be predicted to have a 50% chance of graduating from high school and would be predicted to have about an eighth grade skill level if they did, on a trajectory that leads them to graduate from college at the same, much the same pace as kids in, in more privileged communities. This is pretty radical progress. Um, now, we still have massive challenges ahead. Like if you look at the aggregate data, despite all the proof points, despite seeing now, wow, we know what's possible, we even know how to replicate success, there's still a massive question about how do we do that at the scale of the magnitude of the problem. If you look at the aggregate data, we still have not moved the needle you know, against the achievement gap in, in any, really at all, but certainly not in a, in a meaningful way. And so we've got a very real question on our hands about how do we scale this level of success. Um, even to that question, there, you know, if you look at what's been happening in the last five years, five years ago, if we had convened a big summit of the thought leaders in education and philanthropy and whatnot and policy and had said, let's just, let's put on a piece of paper the, the cities in our country where we really have no hope at all for the public school system, we would have had a big debate I don't know who would have been on the list, but certainly New Orleans would have been right up there. And so would Washington, D.C. And those are two of probably the two fastest improving urban school systems in the country right now. So, you know, not that the verdict is out in terms of we know that they've done what they need to do forevermore. I mean, the problems are still immense in those two places. But there's reason for optimism that we can affect dramatic positive change at the system level. 